Hey folks, everything new under the sun. War must come before the Antichrist can take control of the world. What the Antichrist does is he comes and he creates peace, although it's not a lasting peace, it's a fake peace. It's for a period of seven years. He also fixes uh, the economy and uh, he fixes the famine that's around the world. He, he fixes everything. And war must come because everybody has to be desperate for them to allow him to come to power for for the whole world to accept a one world government a global government and a one world leader they must be in such desperate conditions uh, where they will accept anybody and anything just to get food on their table and just to stop the madness that's happening um, so likely that does not just mean uh, conventional weapons that probably means nuclear warfare and so we have this timeline of the return of the Lord and um, this this needs to be moved ahead, shifted ahead, and I've always said I, I would update the chart, and I don't know exactly when the Lord's going to return or when the Antichrist is coming. But I have said there are signs uh, and th things that are coming, and I believe uh, that uh, war uh, currently, it's the biggest thing on the horizon. We went through the pandemic. Um, that's generally done, although there's some indication that maybe some new things are coming out of China now. But uh, that being said, um, uh, that being said, uh, the, the the big thing on the horizon really is the wars and the rumors of wars. And we're going to take a look at that. So I believe this war in you know, Ukraine, Russia has to escalate significantly. And the Chinese Taiwan um, situation needs to um, go live effectively, uh, turn into war. Um, because it's going to take a lot to convince all the people, especially, you know, uh, country love and patriotic Americans, it's going to, it's going to, uh, it's going to have to be a lot of hardship to convince them to accept a world leader and for the country to accept a world leader. And that's exactly what's going to happen. So let's take a look at the, the articles here. This is azirhedge.com and uh, let me move it down here. Safari, there we go. We are facing the entire NATO in Ukraine, says the Kremlin, as UK's mulls battle tanks. Now, interestingly, Macron, uh, Macron of France, he was the first one to um, um, agree to send tanks to Ukraine. This is another red line. Uh, not only are there Patriot missile systems, air defense, there's now tanks going in. Now you have to ask the question, how much is Russia going to deal with? Are they going to keep using up all their conventional weapons to um, to take out and destroy um, this um, uh, seemingly unlimited stream of uh, weapons, tanks, uh, manpower, and finances into Ukraine? Are they going to let that go on forever? Their, their finances, their munitions would be depleted if they allowed that to continue from, from NATO. So they're going to have to escalate it. They're going to have to step it up if they are uh, going to have any chance of uh, winning. And I don't think a long, drawn-out battle is in their favor in this one because NATO nations would continue to finance it and pile money in there <clears throat> uh, for the long term. So that's not, not, not a winnable thing. Uh, I think Russia has to escalate to the nu nuclear stage. Uh, Russian Security Council security Nikolov uh, Patrushev has issued an ultra provocative, provocative words claiming that it's not fundamentally Ukraine that Russia is at war with, but the Russian military is facing all of NATO inside Ukraine. That's because, again, money, munitions, hardware, uh, technology, etc., um, training is all coming from all the NATO members, or at least many of them. And so how does Russia um, battle this? They know they're battling NATO at this point. It's a proxy war. No one wants to go into all-out world war or call it that. So the NATO nations, the Western governments, are happy to uh, you know, say that Ukraine is uh, doing it and we're simply supporting them. Russia knows Better, obviously, and uh, as do you and I who are paying attention to this. It's a military confrontation of NATO, first of all the U.S. and Britain, with Russia. That's that's the truth of it. All right, Russia's going to mobilize an extra 500,000 conscripts this month, uh, says Ukraine. Kiev is claiming Moscow is preparing to call up an additional 500,000 conscripts following the partial mobilization, which included 300,000 extra troops in October. Now, the suggestion, I believe, was by Canadian Prepper that uh, was that uh, their training facilities, their barracks, their military bases could only handle so many new recruits. <clears throat> and the uh, the maximum number of new recruits was about 300,000. So as they're ramping up their training facilities and kind of moving these new recruits through, you know, 
three, four, six uh, week uh, uh, training and, uh, uh, you know, all these soldier, soldiers to get them to um, a boot camp to get them to the, the uh, front lines. Um, they, they can't take any more in while these while these existing uh, the existing crew of new recruits is passing through. So it, it makes sense that after a couple months, this 300,000 would be done the basic training and now they could uh, take on another 300,000. And at this point, they've probably also uh, built out their facilities to maybe take up to 500,000 for the next go around. So it would make absolute sense really that Russia would be able to and uh, would be capable of taking uh, and moving 500,000 new conscripts, getting them into boot camp, moving them ahead um, so that they're the next line uh, behind this first group of 300,000 that went in October. So that makes total sense. Um, and it also means that this war is going nowhere. Uh, Russia has dug in. Russia is showing zero signs of backing down. Um, they believe it's an existential threat uh, to their country. And at this point, probably it is. Their reputation is ruined now. If they decide to back down, they're, they're going to be ruined economically as a country. So they have they have no option but to continue this war and win this war. NATO, um, NATO could could potentially lose this war, um, create peace with uh, Russia and say, okay, uh, calm down, Russia, we're going to give you, you know, half of Ukraine or something as long as you stop going in there. But NATO's not going to do that either. NATO has no interest in peace. The Western leaders have no interest in peace. Uh, the, the the companies making the munitions, uh, et cetera, and the war machine um, um, uh, is making trillions upon trillions of dollars. Uh, they're making new weapons. They're able to test their weapons on the battlefield, all in a proxy format, um, but they love it. All the people are making tons of money off, off this war. They love it. The U.S. is even just making tons of money, not only off Ukraine, but also off of uh, European countries, uh, Britain, for example, because those European countries are, are buying um, uh, oil, natural gas from uh, the U.S. And of course, they're paying extra money uh, to get it shipped all the way from the U.S. So U.S. is making money hand over foot and U.S. has no interest in stopping this war. Um, because of that, you have to look at these uh, power outages, these terror incidents at power plants that's happening all over the country. There's pipelines down as well, odd incidents, uh, you know, maintenance uh, uh, things, um, uh, leaks in uh, oil pipelines. Uh, and you have to look at all these things and say, this is very likely, since we're at war with Russia right now, this is very likely, um, you know, asynchronous, um, a, a, a form of proxy uh, warfare uh, where um, plausible deniability exists. Russian agents or, or paid off people go in there and do this damage to um, the power plants. They're, they're basically hitting at uh, uh, U.S. in every way they can. Explosions, fires, uh, oil pipelines going down, uh, power plants, uh, 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 substations, all this sort of thing. Uh, this is the asymmetrical warfare that is going to be the definition of World War III, effectively, until it goes nuclear. And remember, all these things were happening in Russia and are happening in Russia right now, where all these mysterious, quote-unquote, uh, fires and explosions and all these things are taking place and drone attacks. You have the same going on, and you have to you have to say that, you know, there's a high, high likelihood um, that these aren't um, individual events. There's some orchestration or influence um, by Russia. There's, there's too many power plants and, and substations being blown up. Too many things happening again. But but the uh, the government, the mainstream media, they don't want to tell you that because they don't want to make they don't want to give you any fear. They don't want people to to um, know that we're at war with Russia. They have no interest in getting the public concerned about it as long as they can keep shoveling money to Ukraine. Because uh, if the public gets concerned about it, the public will either want to go to war or want to make peace. And that means less money for um, the people in power to be making of this Ukrainian war. Uh, this is another thing that's been kind of ramping up. Is the Cascadia subduction zone, uh, zone about to blow? Swarms of hundreds of small er earthquakes rattle Vancouver Island. So this is kind of the common thing. You know, is, is the West Coast going to slide into the, into the Pacific Ocean? Um, this has been spoken of for many, many years, and it's held off. It's held off. I believe uh, God is keeping it for, for a purpose and, and a time and, and a reason. And I don't know when it's going to happen, but, uh, you know, again, you have a great 
big swarm of earthquakes, which could uh, suggest that there is a significant earthquake um, gearing up to happen on the West Coast. Now, on the West Coast, there's uh, massive storms um, uh, uh, and uh, atmospheric rivers going on in California. There's already been, I think I read 11 people killed, 100,000 without power. That number is likely increased by now. Um, but so, uh, you know, the West Coast is already getting hit right now um, just due to the atmospheric storms and the weather, uh, atmospheric rivers and the weather that's happening there. Now, this is um, uh, warnings247.com. Uh, and it says the big conflict is coming. The U.S. ran 22 war simulations with China and Taiwan. So this is the bigger conflict. If you thought Russia, NATO was big, the bigger conflict, again, might be U.S. or NATO, Western nations against China. Because China is the economic powerhouse. And if China stops delivering uh, products and goods uh, to the Western world, well, that's it. Well, we have lost most of our manufacturing capability. It would take us a long time to ramp up. We, it'd be like we were living, you know, 150 years ago in terms of access to goods and services. And even worse than that, because most people don't know how to, um, uh, you know, Jimmy rig things or, or MacGyver things or um, uh, fix their own hardware if something breaks. We're reliant on, on chips and uh, components and all sorts of things from China. Everything you, everything you never would have thought about, um, you know, on your desk that you're looking at right now. Everything's made in China these days, and very little is made in other countries. You, you look at Taiwan, South Korea, there are uh, manufacturing facilities there, but um, not in the uh, massive numbers that China produces them. So the cost of goods and services is going to skyrocket. Uh, and and more than that, uh, it's a supply and demand thing. If they're not supplying uh, and the demand is there, that means the price of everything, like I say, skyrockets, and you may simply not be able to get anything uh, to repair what you have. So... Um, get components that you can repair what you have, and that would be a good prepper thing to do. So there was war simulations done um, surrounding this uh, China-Taiwan situation. And um, I'll just uh, read a bit here. The American Pentagon was uh, numbed by the results of 22 new war scenarios between China and Taiwan that ran a specialized think tank. The second, uh, This is the second set of simulations carried out by the American think tank uh, Center for Str uh, Strategic and International Studies in a six-month period. They ran it 24 times to convince American leadership uh, of the devastating consequences of the war, which far exceeds the conflict in Ukraine. That's what it says. Uh, the American think tank concluded that the Chinese invasion of Taiwan will fail, but at a huge cost to the U.S. So interesting. Uh, that uh, they, the, the, these war simulations suggest that China is going to at some point give up and, and capitulate and say, okay, well, we're not going to go any further here. But <clears throat> it's going to fail regardless, and there's going to be huge losses on both sides. So it will fail at huge cost to U.S., Chinese, and Taiwanese soldiers, such as thousands of dead, two sunken aircraft carriers unleashing Taiwan's navy along with its economy. So it will be devastating to the whole world. Taiwan is obviously a huge chip manufacturer, computers, any, any embedded components, um, uh, controllers, uh, your charge controllers, your Raspberry Pis, your computers that uh, control systems and, uh, and allow us to do business every day and banking. That would all come to a halt as computers start um, um, you know, aging out, uh, chips die, and especially if there's an electromagnetic pulse which wipes out a lot of hardware, we're not going to be able to replace um, those chips uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And it's going to be, uh, it's effectively going to be Mad Max for a while. And I don't believe that the Antichrist uh, will be able to gain power uh, or world control without uh, the world being in uh, absolute collapse, absolute World War Three. And, you know, pretty much Mad Max situation um, to where, you know, the voters, the citizens of the country uh, vote in whatever ref referendum country by country that, yes, they are desperate enough and they will accept a world government to control them as long as they get food. That's, this is what it's coming down to. This is what the Bible says. Um, so these simulations, the report estimates that China will suffer about 10,000 dead soldiers, lose 155 fighters and 138 large ships. In summary, the U.S. Navy lost up to, to 20 large displacement warships, 3,200 soldiers over the course of three weeks. Uh, China would have lost 10,000. Taiwan would lose 3,500 and its entire fleet, consisting of a total of 26 destroyers, frigates completely sunk. 
Japan. Uh, they would be in this war, and uh, they could lose as much as 100 fighters, uh, fighter aircrafts and 26 warships. And how does anybody recover from this? It's incredible. The report said that to prevent China from eventually taking control of Taiwan, there must be four constants that emerged among the 24 iterations of the war games. Taiwan's ground forces must be able to contain the Chinese bridgeheads. The U.S. must be able to use its bases in Japan for military operations. You know, these are all you know requirements to um, prevent this takeover. Number three, the U.S. must have long-range anti-ship missiles to strike the PLA Navy from afar and en masse, a lot at a time. The U.S. must fully arm Taiwan before the conflict be begins, so that's going to be a time factor. Can they fully arm them before China goes in? And of course, China has these same uh, requirements as well. They know that if they let U.S. fully armed Taiwan, they're going to have a lot worse situation on their hands. So they want to attack Taiwan before the U.S. is able to do that. So both sides are moving quickly, and it just, just depends on who decides to pull the trigger faster, and likely whoever pulls the trigger first is going to be the one that wins the battle. Number four, the U.S. must fully arm Taiwan before uh, the conflict uh, begins. Oh, yeah, I read that. And immediately move into any theater of war with its own uh, forces. So the U.S. must actively get engaged, not just provide money or munitions, but actively engage uh, China. Now, again, you have this going on uh, with the Russia-Ukraine situation. Are they going to get involved in two theaters? How is that going to happen? Is the U.S. going to fund this? Um, I think the only way that the U.S. would continue to fund this and that the public would put up with it uh, is if we're in a desperate situation. Effectively, World War III, where we have no options uh, after, you know, after, anymore. So, interesting. And this happened over and over in the simulations. Um, that that no one came out um, a, a good winner, if you will. Everybody lost huge amounts. And, you know, at that point, if China loses that, don't you think China would um, uh, say to Russia, okay, let's go nuclear at this point and let's win this decisively once and for all? I, I do think uh, a, a nuclear war uh, will come sooner than um, simply these two sides, you know, battling to a stalemate over uh, Taiwan. It makes more sense to me that um, someone would say, no, we're, we're going we're gonna to fight this till the end, um, till the last man standing. And uh, I think that's the point we get to in the world where um, that's the only point that uh, people will uh, get to where they will accept that uh, world government, that world leader, the Antichrist, and allow a one world currency. Remember, the, the currencies of the world have to crash too. Because, again, no one's going to give up their sovereign greenback, their sovereign Canadian dollar uh, for a world currency unless um, the world is in such a, uh, a Mad Max situation where we're in war, where absolute, there's absolute famine and absolute economic collapse. So stuff gets really bad before this Antichrist comes in. And once he, once he does come in, it seems to the world that he has fixed the world. But he's a false messiah, and it doesn't fix it for long. Because we know there's about three and a half years of quote-unquote good times, if you will, although bad things are happening. The four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding during that point. Um, the, the opening seals of Revelation 6 and the wrath of God, which is to come. Um, and then he sits on the throne in the third temple as God and, and declares that he is God. Uh, and, uh, and that triggers then the full wrath of God uh, to come after the seals are exposed. So folks, hard times are coming. Be prepared. You're not going to be able to fully prepare. There's going to be a lot of stuff we missed. Um, but, you know, the more you're prepared now in your heart, mind, and spiritual situation, um, the, the better you're going to fare. And at the end of the day, faith in Jesus Christ is what's going to get you through it. Um, and uh, what what's going to get you to the other side, certainly the side that you want to be on, God's side, and in heaven with him, uh, should, uh, should we die during this period. And that's very likely. So thanks for watching, folks. I'll leave it there. We'll see you in the next video.